Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. We've got a quick and easy video today. I'm just going back to basics and I'm showing you how to do an easy resin top coat to protect your artwork and make it beautiful and shiny. I had a resin starter kit kindly supplied by Magic Fly and I was dying to have a go with it to see what results I would get. And I've got to say, I was very, very impressed. So if you're new to resin and you want to find out how to make your artwork shine and glow, just sit back and enjoy the video. When I received this kit from Magic Fly, I was really surprised by the amount of things in there. You get your four ounce bottles of resin and hardener, your dripping nozzles for the bottles, stirring sticks, tweezers, silicon brush, um, little plastic pots for measuring and mixing, silicon pots, and you get 12 droppers if you're making something like jewellery, two pairs of nitrile gloves, and a really detailed instruction manual, which you don't always get with resin. The first job is to measure out my resin and this Magic Fly resin needs to be measured by volume. Some resins you can measure by weight, which I prefer to do, but not this one. It needs to be volume and it's quite important. If it says measure by volume, you must do that. So there are some cups supplied, little measuring cups, and they're really useful if you're just using a small amount of resin. But for my projects that I'm doing today, I'm actually going to be using all of the resin. And so I'm just going to be pouring it all into one of my own cups, which is larger than the ones that have been supplied. The kit comes with a really detailed instruction manual and it tells you absolutely everything you need to know. And so today I'm just following everything that they've said to do because I'm reviewing their resin. I thought I'd better do it the way they do it. And so they recommend warming up the part A and the part B first in warm water from the tap which I've done here. I normally only warm up part A but I'm following the instructions and I'm drying off the bottles because the last thing you want when you're pouring your resin is drips of water from the outside of your bottles dripping in with your resin because that will cause you problems. So warm up your resin and your hardener, dry the bottles and then you're ready to pour it. One question I do get asked a lot is whether or not I wear a face mask when I'm using resin and the answer is most of the time I do. I do find it difficult because I wear glasses but I do have this full face respirator which is really good and it's got the organic filters on there too which is what you need for epoxy resin. If you're going to wear one at all get one with organic filters. Um, I'm not going to go into the whole safety lecture. It's your choice whether you wear one or not and you know lots of people have different views on it. I would say if you're unsure, you should. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, your choice. Right, okay, so we're ready to pour the resin. The instructions do say, I think this in the instructions they said do part A and then part B. Um, I'm putting it all in together. Um, I don't need, you see, I don't need to measure it because I'm using all of it for this project. And so I don't need to measure it out. It's already been done for me because the bottles are all weighed accurately and I can just pour them in. So I'm pouring them both in together and then I'm going to stir it for three minutes and I'm going to stir it slowly so that I don't incorporate extra bubbles in there. You do need to be quite slow with your stirring. Don't whisk it up because you'll end up with loads and loads of bubbles. Okay. 
When I received my resin from Magic Fly, I was in the middle of doing another review video, reviewing some of the Arteza pouring paints. But when I had when I'd finished with my pouring paints, I needed to do a top coat of resin. So I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to use the new resin for that and see how it goes because it is um, a coating resin. And so I thought I need to cut this. I'll use it for this. So it's a journal cover, which I made on a dry erase whiteboard. And I'm just putting some masking tape on the back to protect the back in case any drips come over the sides and then down the back. Whenever you're pouring resin onto a flat object, you need to make sure it's elevated above your table because it's likely to drip down and you don't want it on a flat surface because it will just end up sticking to the flat surface. So that's why I've put those cups down just to elevate it. I've got a puppy pad on the table underneath just to protect my table. And my journal covers in position. I have given it a gentle wipe with some isopropyl alcohol because if you have any fingerprints on there, the oil from your fingers may leave oil on the board and then the resin won't go over that spot. So it's even though something might look really clean, you should always give it a wipe over with a soft cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. And now I'm just gently pouring the resin on. And it's as easy as that. I like to just use a little at a time and I can always add more later on. And then I'm just spreading it with the silicone brush that comes with the kit. And they're really good. Anything silicone, you can just leave the resin on it to dry. You don't need to wipe sticky resin off you just leave it to cure and then peel it off the next day when it's cured and that's why those silicon brushes are so good if you used a real paint brush it would really end up being ruined so yeah i like these brushes so i'm just smoothing it over to the edges i'm going all the way to the edges and i'm not worried about it going over because i want it to go over on this project i want the edges to be coated so I'm going all the way over. If you were doing something where you just wanted it on the top, you could be, if you, as long as you've made sure that your piece is perfectly level before you start, you can make, you can do it so that it just goes up to the edges and it doesn't roll over the edges. You just need to be really gentle and careful with it. And that's a technique people do a lot with coasters. If the coaster that they've made just needs a little top coat, but they don't want to do the edges, you just pour it in the middle and gently almost tease it. You tease the resin to the edges really gently and let it just sit there. Um, but I'm not doing that today. I want it all to go over the edges. Once I'd finished pouring and spreading my resin, I used my kitchen torch just to pop any bubbles. But you don't actually have to do that when you're doing such a thin layer. They will mostly escape by themselves anyway. But you can use your kitchen torch just to make extra sure that there's no bubbles. And I'm just rubbing my finger around the edges to make sure they're completely covered in resin and then it's ready and it just needs to be left to cure. And what you do really need to do is look at it from all different angles and check that there's no little bits of fluff or lint in there. Um, sometimes you cut your Look at it from one angle and it looks great. And then you bend down and look at it from another angle and you'll be, see a cat hair in there or a dog hair or one of your own hairs <laughs> or anything. This seems to appear from nowhere. So go all around it. Keep looking. And once you've found that you've got it clear and you've picked out any bits with a cocktail stick, cover it up with a cardboard box and leave it to cure for a good Oh, I would say leave it until the next day. One thing I didn't mention before is that you have 45 minutes after mixing the resin to work with it. So that's quite a good long working time, 45 minutes. Um, I didn't need that, but 
It's good if you're doing something that requires a lot of time. It also, in the instructions, says you need to give it 10 days for full curing, but it's actually, the next day it felt absolutely fine, but I know what it means. It's kind of, it might seem cured, but, but it's not cured. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it does It does recommend 10 days for absolutely full full curing in the instructions. Now, I'm just zipping through the next bits because I, when I saw the small bottles, I thought, well, that's not going to do much. I'll mix it all and it will do my journal cover. But it did this one as well, which I had that needed covering. It's just a placemat. And I still had some left. So I very quickly, <laughs> thinking about the working time of the resin and panicking a little bit, I very quickly went through my silicon moulds and found some small moulds. This one is a jar with a lid. And so I just poured it in, <laughs> um, added some glitter as well to the lid because I thought that one would do be a good little pot to make to store some glitter that I had which was in a little bag and I wanted something to put it in so I used that one for my glitter and I also did some random little shapes with glitter in. Um, I didn't think too much about it and I didn't plan it very well because I didn't expect to be making anything extra in this video. So yeah, <laughs> I rushed through all of that but it means I could give you the give you the chance to see what it's like for making jewellery and um, small casting objects because although it says it's a coating resin on the box it's actually you can cast anything up to 1.5 inches just as long as you're able to burst the bubbles with a torch because the thicker you lay your resin the more bubbles will get trapped Right, it's all fully cured and I've put it together to make it into the journal and as you can see it's super shiny. There are no imperfections there at all so I'm really pleased with the results of this Magic Fly resin for coating. It looks just perfect so I'm really pleased and I gave it to my husband about a month ago and he's been using it a lot. And I've been back and checked it and there's no scratches to be seen. So it's very good for protecting things and keeping its beautiful shine. And here we have the placemat which also looks lovely and shiny and flawless. So I'm really pleased again with that. However, it's a placemat so it needs to be heat resistant. And on the box, it does say it's heat resistant. And I'm sure it is. The only problem is it doesn't tell you to what temperature, what is the maximum temperature you can put on it. So I would like a little bit more information about that because it doesn't say in the instruction manual. It just says heat resistant on the box. Right, let's see how the resin fared with the castings. As you can see, it's still really super shiny it's picked up all the detail and there are one or two bubbles in there but not many so yeah i would give it a nine out of ten for the castings well for these ones anyway pretty much bubble free for this one it's a deeper one i've slowed it down because i didn't have much footage so <laughs> forgive the slow motion but yeah, it's deeper and there's a lot more, um, there are a lot more nooks and crannies, let's say, for the air to get trapped in. And it did get a little bit trapped. There's a, if you look closely, there are quite a few air bubbles in there. Not too many. Um, I'm a little bit out of shot there, but you can, here we go, you can see now. There are definitely bubbles there. So... For that one, I would say it was about ooh, 6 out of 10 for the deeper castings. It does suggest if you're doing deep castings to do it in multiple layers. So I would definitely recommend doing that. In conclusion, let's see what I think. Right, for content of the pack, definitely 10 out of 10. There's everything you could want and need in there. 
for the high gloss and shine again 10 out of 10 it was so glossy and shiny perfect for bubbles i would give it overall 8 out of 10 for the amount of bubbles for smell i would give it a 10 out of 10 i didn't notice any odor from it at all some people might have a better sense of smell than me but i didn't smell any odor at all for scratch resistance and durability again i'm going to give it 10 out of 10 for price it, at the time of filming it is 14 pounds 99 pence and when you consider everything that you get in the kit, including those really good silicon cups, I think it's definitely worth it. It's a really good price, so I would give it 10 out of 10 for price. And would I recommend it to you? Well, yeah, I would definitely recommend it to anybody who is a beginner with resin who really just wants to have a little go and doesn't want to buy a huge amount. I would also recommend it to people that do jewellery or anything where it's just a small amount of resin that's required because obviously if you don't want to use a lot of resin, you don't want to buy a really large amount. Yes, it's cheaper to buy a large amount per litre but it doesn't last forever and by the time you get all the way through it it will have started to yellow so it can be a good idea to get a small kit if you're not going to use much so yeah I would definitely recommend it to beginners and people who use small amounts of resin I hope you found today's demonstration and review really useful and if you haven't used resin before maybe I've inspired you to go and have a go because it's really a lot easier than you might think. If you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed and you would like to do so that would help me a lot. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.